Hello there guys, Francis Gray here and welcome back to part two of the very large tail loss print build. I'll see you after this. Okay guys, so if you didn't see part one, there'll be a link to that in the description bar below, but basically in a nutshell, we got a really high definition STL file from a website called cgtrader.com and uh, we, I upscaled it from how it's supposed to be and took off the tomb base and the floor and uh, upscaled it way bigger than it's meant to be and then I just cut all the parts up into 27 parts I believe and then we printed those parts off and then we cleaned those parts up, glued them together and then we used regular standard milliput to sculpt over the seam lines. Did a lot of sanding, made, put more parts together, more milliput, more sanding, gave it a couple of coats of uh, grey primer and then we added a scratch built new blade which was from a toy sword which uh, came in really handy and uh yeah and then after a couple of coats of grey primer uh and a little bit more tweaking we ended the video on a black base coat prime well not really prime just a black base coat and that sets us up for part two which is this video where we're going to be scratch building a new base for this big bad boy hopefully it does them justice and we're going to be adding some uh, metallic paint jobs and then we're going to be ending with a nice patina effect, uh, rust effect and then we're going to be sealing it all and hopefully it's going to be a really nice custom build at the end of it. So sit back and enjoy and I will see you at the end. Okay guys, so the original STL file came with this Talos tomb base, which is very reminiscent to the movie tomb that we see in the classic movie Jason and the Argonauts. Now, originally I was going to make this for this figure, and I probably still will one day scratch build a new tomb base for the uh, Talos figure. But uh, unfortunately, I haven't got enough room to display it where I originally planned. Bas basically, in a nutshell, I made Talos a little bit too big and I can't make a base to fit where I want to originally display him. So one look out for one day this being made for uh, if I find a new area where I can display it. But for now, I'm going to have to make a separate base that uh, should fit uh, a lot nicer. So, uh, I came across this while on a holiday, not so long ago, and it, uh, I found it in a charity shop, and it's an old used uh, wooden chopping board. But uh, it's very high quality wood, and uh, it will only, I believe it only cost me four pound, which is a bargain, because uh, a good, decent chopping board like that new you'd probably talk in about at least probably about 40 pound so uh so yeah so as soon as i saw this in the shop i was like yep i can definitely reuse this now because obviously it was a chopping board it does have a few scratches on top but i'm hoping that uh, a good half an hour with the uh, sander i can uh, limit that, that right down Okay, nothing too fancy here. I'm just going to take my time with the sander and I'm going to give it a, uh, probably a good 30 minutes uh, good clean and then hopefully we can el eliminate a lot of those uh, scratch marks. So wish me luck. Okay guys, so now that that's a lot cleaner, I'm now going to print the spray booth and I'm going to give it two coats of a black matte. And this should basically give it a nice base coat that we can build up upon later on. Three hours later. 
Okay guys, so after leaving that to dry, unfortunately the black uh, the black base coat has just showed up all the little tiny little individual little scratches that the naked eye couldn't see first time round. So uh, in the, instead of stripping it down again and sanding it again, uh, in, in retrospect I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut up a piece of uh, thin wood and then I'm going to make a new housing top to go on top of the base. So now that I've got that piece of wood cut, I went ahead and measured out exactly where it needs to go and then I added some more scratch lines so when we go to add the glue it's got something a bit more better to hold on to. Now I know there was already scratches on it but they weren't deep enough for what we need for the glue so uh, good old scalpel to the rescue. So I've done the base and now I'm doing the underside of the wood and then after we add the glue hopefully it's a decent bond. Okay guys, so for this part of the build I'm just going to use what's left of a old Gorilla Glue or Gorilla Wood Glue and uh, yeah, instead of wasting what was already in there I decided to just cut it up with a, a box cutter and then just get my fingers all messy, get it in there and scrape out what's left. Basically it's just better than just uh, wasting it. Okay, so now it's all nicely glued, now we need to go ahead and put it on and keep it in place with some clamps. So while we go ahead and leave that to dry, we might as well be cracking on with a new Talos nameplate. Now I created this in Matter Control and I made it reminiscent to the lettering that's on the front of Talos's tomb. So it's uh, it's a couple of millimetres thick, so it's it didn't take too long to print, it was about an hour and a half, something like that. But uh, all in all, it turned out really nice. So I'm looking forward to seeing this painted up and then added. Okay, so all good paint jobs have to start with a decent primer. Okay, so now that the black is dried, I'm now going to go in with a metallic bronze colour as the next base coat. And now that that's dried, I'm going to go in with a champagne gold and uh, this should make it more reminiscent to what I believe Talos will look like in the end. So while we're still in the spray booth, I decided to go ahead and give Talos a couple of coats of a nice metallic bronze. Now obviously it's very bright compared to the movie version for now but we will be darkening this down later on. So, But for now it works uh, really well as a, uh, as, as a base colour. And now that the glue is fully dried, we can go ahead and we can spray paint the top of uh, the new wooden ledge on the chopping board. So same again, just a black base coat, just so everything matches later on. Uh, 
And now that the black has dried, we're going to go in with the exact same copper tones that we did the tail loss with. Early the next morning. Okay guys, so now that we left that metallic paint to dry overnight, for the next stage I'm going to go in with some, uh, like a champagne gold colour, which once uh, given a couple of coats, should make Talos a little bit closer to the movie version rather than the, uh, the version, in, well, what you see in front of you right now. And while I still have a little bit of that same gold left in the can, I decided to go ahead and uh, make the base matching. Okay guys, so for the next stage I'm going to go in with a watered down black wash. So this is basically just watered down black acrylic that uh, I just squared into a unused uh, ice cream tub that I don't need no more. And I'm just going to apply it on with a big thick stipple brush and then just take my time to carefully wipe away all the excess. And then what this does is it gets into all the little nooks and crannies and then once dry it makes uh, that very vibrant champagne gold look more like aged old bronze and then uh, we need to leave it a couple of hours to fully dry And while we've still got all the, the black wash out, we might as well go ahead and do the base to match as well. And last but not least, I'm going to do the exact same to the Talos nameplate. Okay, so now that the nameplate is dry, for now we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick it into place. So I'm going to take a, a metal ruler and I'm going to make sure that it's the exact same measurement on either side and then I'm going to take a scalpel and then carefully score down the sides so I know where to re-add this after I add the glue and then I added a few scratch marks again just so it's a little bit more adhesive uh, and it might last for a better uh, bond. So for the next part I'm going to go in and I'm going to use this dark green watercolour and I'm going to, same again, just like the black wash, I'm just going to paint it on, get into all the nooks and crannies and then use a paper towel to gently wipe away the excess. Basically all that does is it just goes a long way to adding a, like a green tinge base coat to the bronze statue which is uh, the beginning of adding the layers for the patina effect. So you'll see as I go. And now I'm going to do the exact same but for the base. But I'm going to make sure that I definitely get some of this in the, the top corners. Yeah. 
and now I'm going to do the same thing but this time with a light blue and I'm going to focus this mainly on the deep uh, uh, areas where the green watercolour accumulated. And once again the exact same but this time for the bass. Okay so as you can see there now the watercolour has been put on quite thickly and it's starting to look a little bit more like aged bronze but uh, for the next stage I need to go ahead and add like a sealant over this with uh, some matte varnish but unfortunately quite a lot of the watercolour uh, pigment will be lost once it's sprayed so uh, it's a necessary step but unfortunately you do lose uh, some of the uh, shading but we're going to go ahead and we're going to re gain that later on. So this is just like a undercoat if you like. And now I'm going to do the exact same to the base. So for the next part I'm going to go in with a model colour dark sea blue and this is going to act kind of like the green watercolour but uh, it's going to be more permanent now. And to make sure that it all matches, I'm going to do the exact same again on the base. And now that the dark green is dried, I'm going to go in with a electric blue and this is really going to make the patina effect stand out. So same again, rinse and repeat, this the past steps just with a different colour. And in order to make it all match, again, <laughs> I've got to do the nameplate and the base with the electric blue. For the next stage I'm going to go in for gold airbrush paint and I'm just going to use a dry brush effect just to bring out some of the foreground highlights.
and now just a black acrylic just to make the eyes look dead and hollow. You know the thing about it? Tail off. He's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, doesn't seem to be living. <laughs> so for the next stage, I decided to flip the base over and then uh, decided to use just some black acrylic and then just paint the bottom of the uh, of the feet and the actual uh, base. Now originally I was going to keep this copper but because uh, it was a different shade it uh, kind of stood out a little bit and it drew the eye away from the main figure so I decided to just uh, neutralize that by painting it black. But uh, since I'm working on this, I'm uh, now thinking, uh, could I do something better with the feet? So uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I think I might go into uh, my 3D uh, matter control uh, engine and see if I can design something. So with this being ancient Greek, or ancient Greece, I decided to fashion or make uh, four round rings that kind of look like uh, Greek columns and uh, basically just make them so they're the same width but they also the same um, circular in circumference inside so we can just place these over and then just add a little bit of glue and then uh, leave to dry. Okay let's get 3D printing. Six hours later. Okay, let's get these bad boys primed. And now I'm coating them with a white primer. So now that they're nicely primed, for the next stage I'm going to go in with a watered down medium brown and I'm going to give it all a wash and then I'm going to gently wipe away the excess with a bit of clean kitchen towel and then that basically just gets into all the nooks and crannies and then it just goes a long way to make these columns look like they're aged and let's face it, I very much doubt the gods would be doing any cleaning when they are visiting their treasure trove So now that the black has dried, let's go ahead and uh, glue these in place. And now just a quick touch up with uh, some gold slash copper just to bring out some of the highlights and I think we're finished.
Okay guys, so here he is, Talos from Jason and the Argonauts, 3D printed, all put back together, no seam lines, to say it was 27 random parts, and then the, the, obviously the sword was extra, and then obviously scratch build base, it's all come together to look like one nice display, so I'm really happy with this. I, I would have liked to have done the temple base and one day I probably will still make that but for now this is a really nice base and I'm really happy overall. So if you've enjoyed this video or part one or part two please hit that like button, share on Facebook and Twitter because it helps new people find the YouTube channel which I'm always appreciative of, thank you for any help. If you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future builds. And if you want to be a superstar and you want to help see this channel grow, please take five minutes to check out my Patreon page. So, once again, I'm Francis Gray and this is the huge 3D print of Talos from the epic movie Jason and the Argonauts. I'll see you in the next build!